Alright, welcome to uh, part 27 of the Dotson restoration project. <laughs> Dotson. So this uh, video is about the windshield install, the rear glass install. I'm not going to cover these big units all yet. That's going to be a while. And also the taillights, the 520 taillights installed on a 521. Uh, that's the beginning of part one of the 520 taillights. That's a lot of work. I'll show you here in a second. So here's the, the beginning of the tail light install. You can see I got them all, they're all working except for the reverse lights. I haven't plugged it in yet. But uh, this is the beginning of that. I have to make adapters to go from 520 to 521. So enjoy this video. Like, subscribe, comment, and uh, see some more. There's actually a lot more stuff in here, more fuse box stuff, some other little bits and bobs in there. This is my original windshield. Well, is it the original windshield? I don't know if it's the original original. I don't, I don't see a Nissan logo on here. I don't think it's the factory one. I don't see a Nissan logo on here. But uh, the, the rear glass is the original. I have that. I just cleaned it. A little crack in here. Kind of goes all the way through. It looks like there's a chip right here, a rock chip. So uh, I think I just found a brand new windshield. I'm going to go pick it up tomorrow locally. Hopefully, it sounds too good to be true. So I just ran a piece of this three millimeter uh, vacuum line from the distributor to the car. I think it's the only vacuum line on the truck, except for the one of the brake booster, of course, which is thicker. But uh, yeah, this three millimeter silicone stuff is awesome. I ran this on my '90s hard bodies and stuff. So much better than the regular rubber stuff. Uh, it just bends way better, holds shape. Okay, so here's my uh, modified headlight bucket fix. So here's the uh, original 520 spring, 521. It's very short. I don't have any more, so I just ran a piece of aluminum, bolted it down to the original holes so I don't have to modify the assembly. And I just ran a three millimeter bolt. I got a piece of silicone hose, a little rubber washer. Now it's kind of rubber mounted. So it's nice and tight, but it can, it can still move up and down, left and right, and just pivot on that bolt. So, uh, you don't have to worry about the headlight falling out. So here's the original cluster. I just cleaned it up a little bit. The lighting's not very good here, sorry. But it's kind of interesting. I took these nine bulbs out, and they're all different part numbers. 181s, 161s, 189s. Uh, I think they all said Toshiba on them, but they're like four different part numbers. And I just went ahead and replaced them all with a, an LED bulb. So we'll see how that works out. When I turned on the key before, a couple of them worked. So I don't know exactly which ones don't work. All right, so step one, install the new glass. Here's the part number, I forgot the brand already. Get the rubber on the glass. I don't know where the label went, we'll find out later. Step one. Thank you, Chris, for helping me install. Or actually, for installing my new windshield. Brand new windshield. New rubber gaskets. Awesome. And uh, the original, I think it's the original rear window. Put a piece of tint on there first. This was hard to install. That was a lot of work. The front windshield was a lot of work, but it wasn't as bad as the back glass. But, uh, it looks totally, it's actually got some kind of tint on it. Can't believe I found a local, local glass, 15 miles away from my house. First place I called, yep, we have one in stock. 137 bucks, come and get it. I'm like, wow, that was easy. Who knew? I don't know what brand this glass is. Why? Oh, X, Y, G. Here's the part number, FW00197. The same thing, yeah, that's the same part number over here. FW197 is the part number for a 520, 521 windshield. Got some crazy, uh, I don't know what that is. Electronic tag on it. 
It's got a green tint. I don't know if you can tell. Okay, so the first step, take out the old brackets. I just drilled them out. Here's the factory mount. And the other one I just took off painted. Here's the bolts that hold them on. They're Phillips head, six millimeter machine screws. I just drilled them out. And there's also a ground bolt up there. Kind of one screw in one of the holes, not sure. I can obviously see that this top hole is threaded. So I think the plan A is for putting the 520 lights on a 520 truck is just to move this bracket closer and hang it that way. That's my plan. Hopefully that works. I'm um, assuming that's what everybody else does. I don't know. We'll see. They should be here today. So for the record, the original hole, hole to hole was exactly 18 and a half or 47 millimeters. I read the new tail lights were like eight and a half inches. This is 18 and a half, so I guess they're 10 inches shorter. I don't know. Let's see. So I just put six new screws in here. Actually, not six, whatever it was many. All brand new number of screws in there. I just threw a coat of paint on this bar. So, because part of it is exposed. Uh, and uh, when I put the dash back in, I don't want to be able to see the bare metal. I left the bare metal because I still got to weld on tabs to mount the glove box and whatnot, whatever else. Hopefully an air conditioning system in that space one day. But for now, the next step I think is uh, put the dash back in and then we can finish the wiring so we can start this thing. Oh, I got to fix this cut. I accidentally hit the chair with an angle grinder and ripped it. I got to fix that. Shoot. Sure. Alright, so just like I thought, the original uh, bolts are 5mm by 7, just like the front turn signals are 5mm. And yeah, as you know, I convert the whole front end to 5mm if it wasn't metric it is now. So these are 5mm. I went ahead and run a tap through to get rid of the rust because these things have been empty for a long time. I'm using these uh, stainless screws from, uh, I get these at Lowe's, we can get them anywhere. They're uh, stainless button heads they look really cool using them on my grill instead of the screws but uh plan is i'm going to use those screws here by a nut insert here and i'll probably use them here and here so if i have like a three there two on the light one there and then uh or wherever the bracket is yeah so i'm going to have a whole bunch of those probably different lengths i don't know we'll figure it out so here's the dash all put back together. Just put the glove ashtray back in for the test. It will clear the radio. I was really concerned that the wires and the radio and the ashtray were all going to fit, but it's pretty tight. But there is clearance, as you can see. So I could technically have a double din radio. I am going to put a small one. I'm not going to do the traditional big one, obviously. But uh, the ashtray will still go back in, even though nobody will ever smoke on this truck. So there's the nut search for the glove box. So I was kind of debating whether I have to paint this or upholster this. I just think I'm just going to come back into this later. This dash is easy to take out in the future. So I'm going to put it back in and keep going on trying to get it running. I just popped the dash back in for the first time with the wiring harness. Now i got to plug all these back in. It's pretty cool. I can actually get to these pretty easily. Um, I did scrub though. I forget to put a bolt. There's actually a bolt that goes from here to here in the corner here. So I forgot that. I've only got like four bolts going across. And I got the original whatever going from the firewall to the dash. So that'll be fine for now. It's going to come out again in the future. After it's drivable, hopefully. So let's uh, plug all the wires in. So the windshield is installed. The rear glass is installed. I tinted it first. I had a buddy actually install it for me and I helped him. He's done it before. It was actually pretty hard work. So here's the uh, gaskets that I bought off eBay. I'm not exactly sure what company makes them. They're in uh, Thailand, as you can tell, made in Thailand. They fit great. They say they fit 520, 521. Both rubber gaskets work perfect, so I couldn't be happier. So if I ever need them again, I'm gonna buy more parts from this company. I gotta buy all the rubber door seals next. There's a little unboxing here. I can't believe how small these lights are. It's so hard to tell in the pictures, but uh, here's a uh, 
620 Hot Wheel. Came uh, beautifully packaged in a box. Never owned uh, 521 lights before. I suppose I never had one in my hand before. But these are, I'm sorry, these are 520 lights, not 521 lights. So uh, even though two of my friends back in the 80s had 521s, uh, I don't even know if I even know anybody had a 520 back then. I used to actually ridden in a couple of 521s back in the early 80s. Yeah, these things are uh, they're tiny. I can actually fit two of these in the space where this thing goes. The 521 lights are twice the size, so pretty simple. Let's see if I can make them work. I'm pretty sure I can. Okay, while I'm waiting for more parts to show up, and heat shrink tubing, I decided to uh, do a little motivational project here. This steering wheel, whatever you call it, horn button thing, comes apart. It's black, it's silver, and the steering wheel is black. I'm not a big fan of this silver. It needs to be repainted silver. But I want to keep the colors low on the truck. I want it to be like white, black, chrome, or red. So, what color should I paint this? This silver doesn't look like chrome, so I'm thinking red. This thing comes off with four screws. The horn button thingy came off with three screws. So it's very easy to paint. I love to paint this thing, but I'll just try cleaning it because this is actually a sticker with the letter D. And uh, I think it's a sticker, so I don't think that'll come off easy. I'm gonna have to clean that up. I could clear coat this, make it shiny again after I clean it. That is an option to kind of bring back some pop. But uh, this is like die cast metal. I'm gonna try painting it red. I got a couple other things I want to paint red. So after all that work yesterday, cutting and drilling out six bolts, I'm gonna put these back on exactly where they were. <laughs> but I'm gonna use new hardware just in case. Um, I was going to move them over here and then I was thinking I could easily just bolt these onto the back of the new 520 lights but I kind of could do that. The problem is they don't really work. See those holes? You got the 5 millimeter hole but the 521 lights are just way taller and longer. They're bigger in every dimension. It just doesn't fit. So, you can see the hole wouldn't even hit the case. So I think plan A is, is to put a piece of steel, put that thing back on where it was. I was going to move it over. Put a 4x20 piece of steel. I've just found one. It's kind of close. I'll probably just do a piece of flat stock. Cross here, cut two rectangular holes. Kind of like my trailer over there. And then I know people put trailer lights on here, but I wanted to kind of keep the look. Uh of OEM lights and then recess these into that now the piece of steel I could paint it white black uh, red whatever but uh first I gotta make it so that's going to be plan A so now I got a piece of, I need to find a piece of 4 by 20 two of them like eighth inch or something 14 gauge here comes Amber all right I'm one drill bit away from with the stupid fuse box. Uh, so I'm putting three millimeter nut certs, eight of them for the two fuse boxes. Uh, everything else is six millimeter. So I uh, just got to clamp them on a bench. Let's take it out again. Drill this one out, put a nut cert, and go back in the truck for good, hopefully. So I had to cut this. I did not move the wiper motor yet, but I did cut the bracket. And so I had to cut this a little bit so you can see how it's funky size now. I decided to use two big six millimeters to bolt the top to the two inch tube, which holds the circuit breakers. So those are all six millimeter, six millimeter to the bottom, six millimeter here. But the top is all three millimeters because bow holes. And then I had to put a hole in the fuse box so they would. Uh... Oh, it doesn't fit! right way there we go so now there'll be eight bolts so many bolts and nuts in this fuse box the original one was like two little sheet metal screws and boop done 
this is what four eight two four. Oh my gosh so many nuts and nut certs uh it's kind of ugly but it's functional and uh hopefully it'll work so <laughs> okay action so i finally bought one of these uh mix quick things i saw it on puddings fab it's actually american made i emailed them asked them gave them feedback on their youtube video asked them why it doesn't say american made because it says it on their website and they said they were going to add it this is the revised more heavy duty one and unlike puddings fab job it says not to do it full speed so here we go i'm going to clear put that thing Oh, that's gonna look good. Now it looks better already. See, I washed it with soap and water, and it looked good for a while. As soon as it dries, it looks terrible. That's one coat of clear. And then, uh, the weird thing is, I'm using this red, this engine red from Dupacolor. It has a terrible tip, by the way. That's the clear I'm using on the steering wheel. I'm using this red. You saw it at the gas cap. Get the horn. Just doing a little splash of red to give it some color. Some Nismo flare. It's a 1970 Nismo edition 521, right? Here's the beginning of my 520 taillight install on a 521 truck. First thing, get a piece of flat, eighth inch. I got three feet long, three. All I really need is a three inch wide, eighth inch flat stock. I got a piece from a local hardware store. That was uh, three feet long, so I cut it down to size. I think it's like 20 inches or something. And then the first thing I do is notch around the bracket. The second thing I do is drill a couple of holes. I'm using the factory five millimeter bolts. So I drilled like a six millimeter hole. You can see the original hole is five millimeter. I just added an insert to another one. It's pretty much already the same size. And here it is installed. Now, all right, so now that I know this fits the truck, I went ahead and uh, ground these nuts, these holes flat, stripped out all the bulbs and everything. So I have some steel to work with. I'm going to paint this anyway, just paint it black, but I'm going to put it about that far away because the body's got a bracket here, and I want these nuts to fall into the body, so I'm going to move it over a ways to clear. There's going to be a bolt going through to hold the lens on, a bolt to hold it to the housing. These things are, you know, not symmetrical. There's no difference between left and right, that I could tell. So I'm going to put it right in the center of this three inch. This I think is two and a half. And then the hole is even less. This measures about 40 by 182 millimeters. So that's the size hole I need to cut to let that thing go through. So I'll have the steel flush. You know, I just thought of. I could even just mount this on the back. Well, the plan was to cut a big 40 by 182 hole here, and have that plop in and mount flush against the back. That's why I just grinded these down flat. They would sit on there. In the theory, I could actually mount this on the back side and just put the lens on that side. Would that be cool? I don't know. Hmm. It's an idea. I don't know. I'll just do it another way. So, let's cut a big old hole. Either way, i got to cut a big old hole in this thing. That'll be fun. I think I'll have to use the cutoff wheel and I drilled it. Let's do that. I think this is where I'm going to put it. So I went ahead and put a square on here and drew lines to try to figure out how to square this you know, rectangle or whatever the shape is oval is so I moved it over quite a bit so uh, yeah let's cut it out I think that'll be good I kind of think I need to get really close to the corner but I don't think I do it'll be right there so let's see how that works out how to cut a big hole all right so I got the four holes drilled for the outside of the square rectangle I'm cutting out just went ahead and clamped it on top of the left side. I'm just doing the right side. So just to make sure 
I've been doing this, drill all the holes, flip it over, drill all the holes, just to make sure that the left and the right are identical. Alright, I think I'm all done. Oh, actually, I actually finished this one with the last hole. But, um, so now I've got, accidentally drilled three holes in this one. I should show you that one. I got the light, got a hole for the lens, and I got a hole, a hole for the uh, housing. Can't decide what kind of bolts to use yet. I'm not going to use any of the bolts that came with the light, that's for sure. But, um, they're weird sizes. But then uh, I got to drill one more, two more holes here. This side is actually done. It goes this way. So I got one hole. And I got the two holes correctly. So now, I just gotta figure out how to bolt this. I could just put a nut sort here and here that would hold the housing to this and then screw the lens on. I don't even need to these, but I will put something in there. I finally got that screw in. So when I put these nut certs in, the holes don't line up anymore. But a little tap of the uh, hammer, block of wood on here. Look at that. Now it fits. <laughs> I just took a block of wood, a two pound hammer, kind of bent this around the thing, and now a uh, bolt goes in. Pretty cool. Better than elongating the hole. And I finally got this license plate off. Uh, oh, I'm soaking in acid right now. Ah, uh, this thing's a mess. I'm gonna have to drill out all these bolts. I really want to take this thing off because my license plate light, those holes are, threads are kind of messed up. Alright, that was looking good. I just bolted this on. I enlarged these holes to uh, 5mm. So I got 5mm, 5, 5, 5. Oh, and I got to do this one. These three bolts are 5. But this top bolt, this next bolt, is probably not going to be 5. Yeah, these three is five. This hole is too big for the nut cert. Um, so, gotta figure that out. I could, it would probably look better with five, I don't know. I guess I could make that hole smaller somehow, put a washer or something. But anyways, there's the first look. I gotta glue the gasket on, because it keeps falling off. And I gotta figure out these. I need some four millimeter by 25 millimeter nuts. The original ones will work, but they're flathead, so I want to get some longer Phillips head, or even uh, Allen head, I don't care, as long as they're not flathead. And they need to be longer. Alright, so I need another <laughs> hole here, so I'm going to actually match the holes from uh, this side. So I took the bracket off the truck, and uh, put it underneath. These two holes, I think I'm doing this right, yeah. Because I want these holes from the outside to match the inside. So I'm marking on here, fill this one out, rib nut this. How do I get that hole? And I still gotta do that hole. Yeah, then I do that hole over there. Okay, the first thing I need to do is uh, these things are not real flat. Put them on the belt sander. There's some little ridges and the lens wasn't going on flat. But uh, now I'm going to put these in here. The problem is, I don't know if it's very flat. Like I don't know if it's because these threads, neither of which I need, need to be removed. Here are those things, and I'll sit down flat. Look at the difference now. It's rock solid. Just get those flat. I drilled some eighth inch holes. So this hole is gonna be big enough. I think I'm gonna put the nut cert for the lens. Not in the light fixture like I was going to. I'll just put it right in the bracket. Just like the mount with the whole base. That way you can take the lens off. This will still be bolted on here. Next step. Yeah, there's no okay. reason there. Oh, I could put it in the lens. Then I'll just throw a bigger one here. Next step, some metallic chrome finish. 
I got these all finished. Got four millimeter, five millimeter. Just gonna paint the back and paint the front. I think I'm gonna paint them black for now. Maybe body color one day. I don't know. I'll do black for now just as a base, at least on the back for sure. This whole license plate frame cleaned up pretty good. I think I got rid of all the rust and tar. Just washed it, waiting for it to dry. I'll throw some paint on it. I'll weld that little piece back together. A couple of coats of gloss black. And then same thing on here. So gloss black on the outback, chrome on the inside. And I had to use a, uh, I had to bend this thing down just to get be able to drill. I had to drill out all these broken bolts. I'm gonna put rib nuts in here and then bend it back up and then paint it. This is my spare tire holder and my license plate light. I'll probably take the light out there before I paint. I just figured out the license plate bolts are five millimeter or whatever that standard was. Five millimeter bolts fit perfectly. Both nuts. So I just tried a nut cert and it, the hole fits. I just put a five millimeter in my front bumper. So I'm ready for plates. All right, so the brackets are in. I have to drill another hole. Okay, so now I got all the bolts in. I'm liking this. So now I just bolted in. I just took out the foam. I just got to put all the wires back in. Got the chrome finish. Oh, I got to put the little dividers back in. So, uh, I just want to see what this will look like. This thing doesn't fit very well. Even after I sand it down. Get kind of an idea what it's going to look like. It looks pretty good. Kind of small, but... I think it looks good. The only thing I don't like is uh, extra hole. I glued the gasket in. Wait for that to dry, and my bolts should be here tomorrow or the next day. The new bolts I have to order like 40 millimeter or 35 millimeter long, four millimeters. So with the lens on, which is fine. I still gotta wire it up.